Hello, hello. Welcome back to the podcast. It's your girl, Cami Crawford. And today, we have a real life bestie in the studio. We go back. Back, back. Well, let me tell people who you are. Okay. <laughs> people are like, who the fuck is it? We have Iskra Lawrence in the studio with hey. us today on this show. She is a model, a mom, mm-hmm. and CEO of Salt Air, which is available on Target. Go and get it. Mm-hmm. I just Smells slathered great. it all over my hands. Was this a pink beach? Pink beach. Bomb. That's one of our biggest sellers. This is like the scent of mm-hmm. the summer. Vanilla, coconut. You mm-hmm. need it all over your body. <laughs> and you're one half of the mm. couple podcast, which is also on Dear Media. Yay! Because I know, I wish Philip was here, but I secretly, know. we need some girl time. I so. agree. Mm-hmm. Shout out to you, Philip. <laughs> holding it down. Iskra, we have to talk about our history. We do. We, we have to go, go back. all the way back to the <gasps> Macy's the Ecom days. No, let's not go there. It's dark. You know, one time you <laughs> came out in hives or something, and yeah. I got a call from the agency, and they were like, Iskra, you need to fill in for Cami right now. <laughs> you filled in for me that yes. day? Yes. I got Girl. you. <laughs> I don't know what happened to me. Something must have bit me. I don't know what it was. I broke out in hives all over the left side of my body. I had to get a biopsy done on (gasps) one of them because they were like, we need to figure out what this is. Didn't figure out what it was. So now I just have a scar from the biopsy. Did it ever happen again? No. What? No idea what it was. Huh, we can't even blame the vaccine. No. Because this was like eight (laughs) years ago. literally (laughs) so long ago. I think it might have been the guy that I was dating. Oh, uh, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some of them are allergic. I used I the guy I dated in high school gave me tonsillitis every time I saw him. What? <laughs> I had like tonsillitis for straight two years. <laughs> and you know, we don't see these things as signs when it's happening. We're no. just like, oh how weird. But that was a huge sign. <laughs> that was a big red Stop flag. Snogging yeah. this toxic yeah. creature. Be done. Be done with him. <laughs> okay, so we go back because we modeled together. Mm-hmm. At Jag Models. That's where we were yep. signed in New York. But you've been modeling way longer than me. Oh, don't age me, but yeah, I've been Girl. modeling for 20 years now. But 20 years? That's not even aging you. You've been modeling since you were like five. Yeah, I was 12. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. How has that experience been for you? And mm. now like you know, transferring over into the CEO life, like you're still modeling, but it's different. Like it's people don't different. know what the modeling life, mm. people see one side of it and they're like, oh, like she's a model like this. She must be like doing Vogue shoots. No, we're doing e-com in a fucking basement. We're doing e-com. In fact, the worst <laughs> e-com show I ever did, they warned me. It was for a t-shirt brand. You know, mm. like a stock t-shirt brand where mm-hmm. they put whatever logo on. And mm-hmm. they said, we're going to shoot around 200 t-shirts today. Some models get red ears from putting the t-shirts on and off so quickly. So I just want to let you know, we have a tub of Vaseline over here in case you want to just prep your ears. It's just random shit that no one That's tells so you about that sad. happens. That's right? really sad. And you're just in a basement. <laughs> yeah, a basement. With no daylight. There's always a basement. There's always a basement. But no, it started when I was 12. I entered a competition, Elgar Search for a Supermodel. Elgar doesn't exist anymore. Yeah, no. Sad, sad. TBT. Mm-hmm. And I entered these, this competition with photos my mom took of me up against the closet with a fan. That she... <laughs> <laughs> thinking I'm Beyonce yes. you know it's like the same time Beyonce's just come out with her solo album yes. everyone's just in that zone and I got down to the finalists I got signed by Storm Sarah Dukas who also scoured Kate Moss mm. I love just name dropping that love that love and that. I was just testing I was doing little runways and very soon I realized that my body even at like 12 13 14 was curvier mm. I had hips my whole dad's side my dad's one of 10 they oh all God. yeah there's seven aunts and they are all pear shaped I don't like discussing women by mm. a, a fruit yeah but you get the visual right and they always told me oh you're gonna get the curse Lawrence bum the curse the curse of the Lawrence bum meanwhile back at the ranch meanwhile this is the money maker baby <laughs> that's what I'm saying <laughs> So I got dropped from Storm at 15 and they gave me this list of 11 agencies and I went and saw every single one. But they dropped you because of your body? Yeah, my hips were 37 inches and they needed to be 35. Like they were very, very clear about that. Wow. My body shape was just not correct. And every agency I went to, and this is back in the day where one agency in particular, they have an A4 piece of paper and they would rate me one to 10 on my nails, skin, hair, teeth, everything. And you're just straight up getting rated out of 10. Can you like imagine you're a if they tried on to a do that now? Belt. Like you're just yeah. like, oh, what is this product? Mm, eight. Uh huh. What? Did yeah. you ever see the ratings? Of course. 
That's why I got Invisalign braces because they gave me like a six for my teeth and I was like, what the fuck's wrong with my teeth? I didn't know there was anything wrong with my teeth. So yeah, that gave me, that was honestly probably the start of my eating disorder. Mm. Just clearly seeing people rate you yeah. and just measuring you and constantly feeling like you're too big. I just looked at my body and I was like, wow, it's it's not right. Like I have to fix myself. Mm. And so how do you do that when you're like 15? you stop eating. There was no healthy way for me to understand. My parents didn't come from money to get me a trainer or give me any kind of education around health, healthy eating. So yeah, I straight up just went on the Beyonce maple syrup diet. Do you remember when that yes, came out? Yes, yes. It was like lemon, cayenne pepper, yes. mm -hmm. did that. But they said she like drank that for a few days before like a shoot or an event or a tour, right. which is like, not good. It's not good. I love you, Beyonce. Yeah. But that was a miss. But it's probably bullshit as yeah, well, right? right? right. Uh, these oh, well, media, I so. you know, I hope so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I tried all of those things, all of them of which are unhealthy, making me super unhappy. If you're hungry, you're not happy. Yeah. Like just, just a fact. Yeah. So I kind of starved myself for about six years. I was like working out, blurry vision, passing out, like Ooh. not okay. And I was just still not small enough. You know, I was mm. still just walking into these rooms, comparing myself, not getting the job. And then I heard about plus size modeling. Mm. Thanks to the Queens, thanks to Robin Lawley and mm -hmm. Candace Huffine and Marquita. And seeing those images, I was like, whoa, there's another way to do this. Yeah. So I went and I found there was literally one agency in London that had a plus size division. Went there, pitched myself. I still didn't get it. They, they told were like, me you're I was not too big small. Yeah, you're not big enough. You're you know, in between it, now. At this point, I'm probably like a US six. Yeah, in between. In between. Mm -hmm. So I was like, well, fuck this. I've just wasted six years of my life trying to fit one standard. Yeah. And now I won't fit the other one either. I was like, that's when it's time to stop changing myself and start changing the industry. Mm. That was really the, the, I just got really motivated. I got angry. Yeah. You know, sometimes anger is a great motivation. Oh, yeah. I was like, I'm, I'm sick and tired of these gatekeepers telling me it's either one way or the other. When I look around and I see what people are, who are shopping and buying these products, they're people just like me. So why can't I represent myself? So mm. I went out and I cold called clients. I was like, just pitching myself. Uh, really? Undercutting, obviously. <gasps> As you should. You know, As I was you like, should. listen, you need a model that's in the middle that really represents who your customer is. and I. Brands loved it. I worked wow. hard. I was efficient. I was cheap. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're like, I'll do this shit for free. You know, I'm already <laughs> doing it for free. Right. But I tried everywhere. I went to Milan. I lived in Turkey. I don't know if you ever knew I lived in what? Turkey. Yeah, no, I lived in I Turkey didn't for know like that. two Actually, months. We, we were basically neighbors in New York because we lived we across neighbors. the street from each other. Yes. <laughs> That's but yeah, so I went to Turkey. I lived in a house with 13 models, none of which spoke English. Oh my God, the model apartments are Ooh, things that people do not talk about. Dead pigeons just falling from the chimney. There's <laughs> never a time in life when I've ever wanted to. No, I'm glad you that. didn't have to experience no, that. No, but for a lot of models, that is a necessity. It like, is. It's not what anyone wants to do, mm -mm. but in order to afford to live somewhere, yep. people, models who are working, have to live in an apartment together. Mm hmm. It, well, they don't have to. It's not a requirement. <laughs> but, like, if you don't have the money to, and you're moving yeah. to a random new place, they live together. Mm -hmm. And it will be, like, 14 women. It certainly will. In an apartment with how many bathrooms? Well, you know, when we when I first moved, I lived with five girls in, in a York. one bed. In a flexed one bed. In a one yeah. bed? Yeah. I shared, a, I shared a bed with someone. Then my housemate shared a bed with someone. And then we had one girl just stuck on a blow-up mattress. Boop between the kitchen and the, the setup wall we had. Just slid in under the kitchen counter. Model life. Model life. It Sign is not up. glamorous. America's next time model this. Is, this the is hair, like just tails. hair everywhere. That's all I remember, just going to the sink and just wanted look. Oh my God. <laughs> no, I did not know that. Uh -huh. Where was it? Was it Fight Eye? Where was it? No, this was, we were on 34th and 8th. We were right oh, by MSG. Shit. Yeah. We picked location over square mm. footage. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because I was out prime. every night. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Oh, my uh -huh. God. Okay. So you're living in Turkey. You lived where else? Obviously, you started in the UK. Yeah. Did Milan. Uh-huh. No one wanted me in Paris, obviously. I had an agency mm. in Spain for a while. I should, Germany. Did Germany mm. for a while. I heard Germany is tough. Germany's tough. They were very much like, no phones on set. <laughs> Don't even look at it. Yes! <laughs> Can't do that. That was terrible. <laughs> please take, please cut that bit. No, <laughs> That's what I've heard. I've heard uh -huh. I remember when I first started modeling, we were both at the same agency. Uh -huh. 
And one of our agents called me and was like, there's a agency in Germany that wants to sign you. Mm. But they were like, let me just tell you, <laughs> <laughs> this is what you can look forward to. They were like, they are notorious mm-hmm. for not making sure that the models are like fed. Yes. And, you know, have a, a sip of water mm-hmm. while you're. So I was like, that was enough for me. to. I was like, fuck no. Yeah. I'm not going there. It was a lot. <laughs> But listen, I was do anything for the money at right, that point. Right, yeah. And and you're talking, it's not much, right? It's like 300 a day. I'd probably get 300 a day. And that was for laundry e-com, like in Germany. Jesus. I remember that. Ooh. But you live and you learn. Yeah. And then yeah. I ended up going back to the plus size agency and saying, hey, I've got all these direct clients. Mm. I'll give them to you mm. and give you 20%. If we would just put me on your books. Because it's only so far you can get hustling on your own. Right. You still have to have an agency kind of back you to get into the bigger castings and make your way. Yeah. So. And get that higher rate. At that point, there was a new booker in town in the agency called Nicole. And she was a curvy black woman. And she saw my energy. And I will say black women have supported me throughout my career. Mm -hmm. And they even support Soltaire more than anyone. Really? Yes. Oh. I know. I love that. Shout out to us. (laughs) <laughs> seriously so and and she just like we're doing this we're doing this together we're going out there and she just let me go to all the castings that were available just mm. to see right and at that point i know i just started to realize i was in a unique position where if i was the only model of my size in that room i could just sell that yeah as being different as being unique yes so then jag came to london was scouting and they heard the whole backstory because at this point now this has been nearly 10 years right right of proof of like i will outwork anyone yes (laughs) i want this so badly i've already invested 10 years and jag at the time had just started working with airy oh yeah 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 just started working with airy myla did airy another one of the models did airy but anyway i was like i want to work with airy yeah sign me moved to new york moved to crown heights on Girl. a four or five train. <laughs> she was in the streets. I was in Crown Heights. <laughs> and I got that airy casting like six months into being in New York. Wow. After they told me I needed to buy padding. Do you remember the padding days? Do I fucking remember <laughs> the padding days? We had Hunter McGrady and Michaela oh, on did. the podcast. Yes, yes. We were talking about the padding. And <gasps> I actually stopped bringing my padding. Right. To jobs. Yeah, you had to. It's... Mm-hmm. Unless you've done, the only thing that I can liken it to <laughs> is dressing up like Santa Claus, <laughs> because yeah. you're just or a Teletubby. Stuffing, yeah, you're just yeah. stuffing your body mm-hmm. and like putting on this costume, basically. And I felt like, so fraudulent. I don't know how you felt. No, doing. I felt fraudulent because I Absolutely. was like, first of all, I'm on sets and sometimes with clients who actually fit the clothes mm-hmm. that. I'm supposed to be modeling mm-hmm. and I know I'm an in-between size and I know I don't fit these clothes. So yeah. I'm, I'm a, at the time I think I was modeling like a size eight to 10 maybe. Yeah. And you're modeling clothes that are like two X, you know, size 14, 14 16. 16. Yeah. And so they make you stuff your, you basically y'all, this is what you can expect. <laughs> okay. You put on a spank mm-hmm. and you stuff it with padding padding that like foam like foam yeah like if you watch rupaul's drag race and you mm-hmm. see them like make their bodies but they make it like to a shape this is not a no, shape uh-uh. <laughs> you're not bigger actually, than bad you're not actually <laughs> forming any kind of shape you're just kind of <laughs> stuffing it wherever it fits yeah. and then you're putting on these clothes because what they want or i don't know if it's still like this but what mm-hmm. they wanted at the time was they wanted and they would say this out loud so i'm not making this up they would right. say we want a slender face yep. we want cheekbones we want like this particular look basically they wanted a skinny face yeah. and a bigger body mm-hmm. my thing was there are plenty of models that already fit these clothes and they're beautiful mm-hmm. as they are book them i would rather you book them yes. than book me then again, like you said, the money, like you're trying to, it's a business. It is tricky. And you're trying to fund your life in a, in a big city, in New yeah. York City. Mm-hmm. It's not easy. No. So you have to do we, we shit compromised. that you don't do. We yeah. all compromised, but there was like a time, I guess you stopped and same thing. Mm-hmm. I, I think when as soon as I booked Aerie, I felt like I had the security to say, I'm not padding anymore. Mm. I'm really focusing on Aerie and the other clients that were willing to book me at my size and be happy with that. Yes. But yeah, it felt like shit, but it would be weird because a client would book you mm-hmm. and they knew exactly what your measurements were. Mm-hmm. And then you get on set and then everyone's complaining about not you not being big enough. It's like, well, you shouldn't book me then. I don't know what to say. One time I had a stylist complaining about my fingers in the (gasps) rings that they had for me. (laughs) 
<laughs> she was trying to fit. First of all, I'm a size seven ring. Mm. That's very it's normal. That's very normal. Yeah. It's like an average mm-hmm. size ring. Yeah. Somebody listening is like, I'm a four. Okay, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> she was trying to fit like size four rings on my fingers. Mm. And they wouldn't go on. And I was just like, well, do you have bigger sizes? And she was like, well, we don't normally have big girls with big fingers. Wow. Normally. She's finger shaming fit. I was like. She just finger shamed I you. have never wanted to leave a set other than once I had a hairstylist <sighs> comment on my hair mm. and call my edges. What did she call them? She called them something bits. Bits? <laughs> she just called them like nappy bits or Ooh. something. What did she call them? She was white too? She said, yeah. Oh, <laughs> why do we do that? Yeah, I don't know, girl. I was like, fuck oh. this shit. I'm leaving, but you can't because it's can't. funny. Mm-hmm. So you're just texting your agent mm. upset and like ready to cry, but you can't leave because yeah. this is a whole production, a whole set, and people are so mean on these sets sometimes. They're mean. Like They're mean. not nice. There's a few times where no one bothered to get to know my name, and I just remember mm-hmm. this photographer going, uh, you can yeah. you go over there, and it was just like, wow, I'm not an animal. Yeah, or I'm plus, not an object. Plus, come on set. Yeah, Missy. <gasps> Missy. Missy. Do people know that yeah. as well? I, we talked about it on the Hunter and Michaela <laughs> podcast too. Oh, gosh, about the M- Missy sec. What what even is that? It's like uh, teen plus, basically. Yeah, teen plus size. So when did you decide yeah. like fuck the labels? Because I I mm. got there a while ago. I was just like I don't subscribe to, and even now like you'll see articles and things I'm sure of yourself where they're like plus size model Iskra Lawrence or plus right. size she, Cammie Crawford plus size model and I'm like I don't feel I I don't I don't identify with labels in terms like that no I struggle to as well I think now I'm obviously in the position where people are reaching out to me more to kind mm-hmm. of do interviews and stuff and I just make sure that yeah. that is not part of who I am yes. and my definition because I don't want that for anyone yeah yeah well, no person no like, human they they love the term and they feel that's you know, true. empowered by it mm-hmm. but I think it's different for everyone I think yeah. we've gotten to a place now where like a model can just be a model mm-hmm. thankfully so. mm-hmm. and we could just leave it at that Absolutely. Like, why do we have... I, I understand why we have a plus-size section in the store, but you really could just make clothes that fit for bigger bodies better. Mm. And not just, like, the same... You know, they'll take, like, the size zero of an item and then just make it just wider. Increase. Like, yeah. <laughs> just increase. Yeah. Just... <laughs> like, let's just make it wider. But then, for some reason, the boob part is always the same. It's like, mm. okay, so... There's, there's work to be done in that space. Yeah, yeah. The, it's the manufacturing process. I know Emmy does a lot of work in that space where she actually goes to fashion colleges and mm. sits them down and are like, you need different size mannequins. Because yes. if these fashion designers are only working on one size, that sample size mannequin of a zero or a two, yeah. they're not going to be able to make clothes right. for bigger bodies. And that always blew my mind. Sometimes at Fashion Week, I'd watch a show and then I'd see the designer come out and she would be plus size. Mm. Yet the, this designer brand never went above yeah. like a 10. I feel like it's a recent thing now where mm. sizing, I mean, even when we were modeling, when Jag came out, it yeah. was the first of its kind. Literally. To have models of all sizes. Mm-hmm. And they never told me that I needed to be any particular size. No. I was never told that I had to be any size, but what I did notice was the bigger I was, the more I was The booking. more work you got. I know. Crazy. Isn't that insane? Yeah. But now I feel like anybody can model. Like there's no... The gatekeepers have gone. The gatekeepers are gone. There's still like elitist gatekeepers and Mm -hmm. exclusive gatekeepers. But when I saw who showed up to Harper's Bazaar Icon Mm. this year, Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, the floodgates are open. Which is exciting. Because at the end of the day, fashion is a democracy. We decide what we're going to wear on our bodies every day. And for the gatekeepers to make us decide because we don't have access if it's size or if it's price mm. like, that's not okay yeah and i think we're getting to that point where it's more inclusive but i don't know still work to be done child <laughs> it's crazy to think of how far we've come though oh because we've come a long way yeah it was a totally different world back so in the day. different it was like the wild wild fucking west mm-hmm. and now so much has changed for you you're a mom yeah you have the cutest baby Thank you. I miss Literally him. ever. Oh. And I'm sure 
you've experienced a ton of different changes with yourself, mm. with your body. You talk about it a lot on TikTok and things like that, but how has that transition been for you? Mm. I was scared about becoming pregnant. Mm. When you've had an eating disorder, any time that you feel really out of control of what your body is doing and how it's changing, you're worried that it's gonna trigger like, oh, I need to control it. Mm. Or I need to just figure this out and find a way to fix it or just be in control. And I knew pregnancy, I have zero control. Yeah. But what was really special was, as soon as I realized in my head that I'm growing this tiny human that needs me, and not just needs me, I'm its home mm. and I have to love this home so that he can feed off that energy and know that he's loved. Yeah. And I have to look after this home because if I don't nourish myself, if I don't move, if I'm not giving myself therapy or meditation or whatever I need to be okay, then my body's gonna be stressed. Mm. And that energy feeds into that connection. There's a lot of books that I read that were kind of very much about the connection that you have with your child because they're, they're literally linked in your they nervous system. They have that your blood running in their veins, like they are consuming what you're consuming. So I was just, I actually got to this point of looking after myself like an absolute goddess. Aww. And I've never felt more beautiful and at peace and like wanting to worship myself because I was like, this is such a gift. Mm. And you know, my best friend won't mind me saying this. She hasn't been able to you know, actually have a full-term pregnancy. And mm. so I was hyper aware that this is very special. Yeah, I'm grateful every single day that I'm able to do this and nothing is guaranteed. So I just had to live in that moment. But the struggle came when I gave birth. Oh, really? Uh-huh. So I gave birth to my perfect, wonderful baby and then I felt empty. <gasps> and then I started to not look after myself. I feel like people don't talk about that. It's rough, the first three months. Cami, you have to wear literally diapers, like adult human diapers for at least like six weeks because you're still bleeding. I've seen, girl, I've been seeing the TikToks about yeah. like the after, the post-birth uh, extravaganza. Pee, when, it, when you pee, and I didn't tear at all, right? So I mm. know I had it mm -hmm. good, mm -hmm. but it's the stinging when you pee and then there's blood and it's just like, and then there's a screaming, crying baby. Girl, you just <laughs> went from making me feel like I'm trying to get pregnant tonight to, you know what, I could wait. <laughs> it's okay. That's how it feels, though. That and and, and you, you're really honest with yourself. You simultaneously have the most gratitude in the world, and simultaneously you're also like, this is the fucking hardest thing in the world. Yeah. There's, ne I've never felt that mix of emotions at the same time. That's why you go crazy and no sleep. Not that's a torture tactic. That it <laughs> No, but what would they do if they put you in like one of those torture chambers? Yeah. Mm -hmm. They would not let you sleep. Yeah. And then they would have a, a, the same sound. Screaming. Over constantly. <laughs> and you had no help. No, it was just me and Philip during the pandemic. Child. But I'm glad because, you know, he was on the road touring. Right, so right. So if anyone yeah. doesn't know, Philip, he works in the music industry. Mm -hmm. Oh, gosh. We I can't love our I... music man. We do. Um, <laughs> mine had some drama. Yes. He actually managed Tory Lanez up mm. until the Megan incident. Mm -hmm. uh, that's an, for another time, another yeah. story. Yeah. But they parted ways and actually the timing was great because it was during the pandemic and he was with me 24 7. he yeah. saw what it was like it wasn't like he was out and then just coming back and right. he was in the thick of it with me and i i needed him as my teammate yeah it's just the two of us you guys make a great team uh, listen i'm blessed he is the most patient human yeah and i we tell each other all the time like if you didn't like your partner, or if you were just having a baby to think it would bring you closer, yeah, phew, yeah, <laughs> you got something coming because yes. it is the biggest test of any relationship. Oh, what do you think? What's the biggest thing that you learned from that? Just choose kind words. Choose mm. kind words, even if you're frustrated, even if you. And the biggest thing is, I'm a Virgo. Mm -hmm. You know this, right? Yes. I'm a perfectionist. I am particular. You yes. need to put the dishes in the correct oh, way. Why do they not know how to load the dishwasher? No, I don't know. They none of them know how to load or the put dishwasher. Put the toilet roll on the wrong way, so when you roll it, it's like what? Why would you put it on back? I don't know. Why would you put it on back? Why do they need Do you know help? I'm notorious for going to people's homes and changing? So the you should. People? I it's do a that Virgo too. Virgo rising in me. Yeah. <laughs> I do that all the time. I'm like, we can tag team next time we yes. get invited to an event. Yeah. Okay, you take the upstairs. I got the downstairs. Exactly. <laughs> Just be changing toilet paper rolls yeah. all over the house. So oh my God. I saw him doing things incorrectly, mm. or at least not my way. Yeah. And I was like, Hold it, hold it in, hold it in, hold it in. And that was hard because I literally read a book and listened to many podcasts, and it said, 
when you've had nine months to connect with this child, mm. when they arrive, it, you already have this special bond. Yeah. You're breastfeeding, like you're really in tune with this baby, but the man doesn't necessarily have that bond immediately. Mm. Mm -hmm. My my doula friend who's a little bit out there, she said that Philip should lick the baby. So I wouldn't say it was a full lick, like a Lion King lick, but it, he kind of like- That's what I was thinking. As soon as you said lick, I was thinking like a <laughs> like forehead, a Simba. Like, like Simba lick. <laughs> it wasn't intense like that, but he, he kind of just kissed and I think pressed his tongue. I <laughs> would like to see footage of the first time that Philip Philip lick, <laughs> licked the baby. Like the first lick must have been But that's super why weird. babies are meant to look like the dads too. Oh, because the dads yeah. in the wild, in the animal terms, don't know if it's their child, mm. so they make the baby look like them. That's why <gasps> babies are kind of ugly for the first bit. <laughs> <laughs> and then they start looking like mom. You have to let them marinate. Yes. The babies you do. have to marinate for you a do. little bit. I don't That's know. why those Kardashians don't show any pictures when those babies are born. No, no, no. I don't see why people post the babies straight out the womb. I know you're <laughs> proud, but like, let's give it a little second. You know, that's a, a small goblin canal. Face. <laughs> it's a tiny canal. But no, it was really important for me because all you do is push the dad away mm. if he doesn't feel like he can just figure it out for himself. Yeah. So that was that was a challenge for me as a Virgo. Okay, so then how did you mm -hmm. get back to you then from that? It took a while. If I'm honest, I want to say it was six months. It was more like nine months, which mm. is ironic because that's how long you're pregnant. Yeah. So I think there's maybe some symbolic way that it takes nine months to grow the baby and then nine months to like figure out how to live without the baby inside mm. you. Mm -hmm. Because the baby's now outside of your body. So you're looking after him. Well, that's how I felt. And not looking after myself. Right. And like I said, it was hard because I had no family and the closest friends we had also had a baby 10 days after us. And it was COVID. Mm. So we couldn't even have people come and help. So definitely what, what started to happen was I stopped showering. Really? Mm -hmm. Nasty. See, and you know, selfishly and as someone who does not have children, yeah, I've always said that that is something that I cannot sacrifice. I, I thought that too. I hate to stink. I think it's disgusting. Like I shower at least once a day, at least. Yeah. Usually twice yeah. a day. And I just hair up in a messy bun dressing mm. gown on a robe whatever you want to call it yeah and it was messy mm. and i kept giving myself that affirmation like i'm a mess like i kept saying it and mm. philip was like my love like please like find some more positive things to say and my friend called me out too she goes no your environment might be a mess but you are not a mess mm. but mm -hmm. it was not it was not cute for a while Damn. and philip said to me he sat me down and he goes what do i need to do to help you yeah i said you know what can I just have like 15 minutes of guilt-free time to just get in the shower? Yes. Like regardless of if there's crying going on or if you think he needs feeding, like I just need to be on my own. And sure enough, something magical happened when I just got myself together, right? Mm -hmm. And I don't like the way people degrade like girls who put makeup on and put cute clothes on. Like, no, actually it's really important. Yeah, it's not just vanity. I lost my self sense of self and I needed to put myself back together, these pieces of me, because you're essentially a whole new human. Yeah. You have a whole new full-time job role in your life and everything you felt before feels different now. Your hormones are going crazy. Mm -hmm. Your body is like softened and like released in many ways. Mm -hmm. Your feet even get bigger. Did you know that? Girl, yes. And I can't risk well, my that shoes because can't. I'm already a 10. Yeah. <laughs> where, where am I going from here? Well, it should be in the clearance section. <laughs> it's true. I'll save some money. Mm -hmm. I only wear Uggs anyway these days. There you go. <laughs> Sponsored by Ugg now. Yeah, exactly. But I took that time but this is when I'm also getting sent PR packages right so I was like makeup's exciting skincare's exciting mm. body care was not exciting mm. and this is where I was like oh maybe if there was a product that made me really excited to shower or like smelled so good yes. I just felt like a tropical goddess insert salt air it, and here comes the <laughs> concept for salt air yeah. and so that's really where it came from it's like I love body care products yeah. how can I make this innovative and exciting and fresh and new and sustainable and so like I said everything happens for a reason yeah. you know and that kind of like isolated moment of me feeling lost and alone and in COVID 
salt air wouldn't have happened without that yeah i needed salt air and i needed that creativity and like that outlet mm -hmm. to grow something that was for me obviously i've just grown a baby yes but what was iskra about to do my modeling career wasn't happening because no one was modeling and i didn't right. want to go back to new york right especially during covid yeah so it's like what am i working on what am i doing with my life i think we all had those big Girl, I had that moments moment all the time <laughs> still yeah. still sometimes where uh -huh. i'm like what am i doing and even when you're doing so much like mm. even what you said like obviously if you're listening to this and you're hearing the story of a mom who had this moment and it then birthed a business, well, right. a baby and a business. A baby and a business. I'm not a mom, but I can relate to mm. right now in life, I'm so busy. I'm the busiest I've ever been. I have, my career yes. is going amazing. Mm -hmm. Thriving. But I'm investing so much into that that I have not been pouring into myself. Mm. So recently, okay, I just <gasps> discovered my non-negotiables of life. So I have three non-negotiables that I'm like, it. these are the things that I have to do for myself every day or every week that I can't compromise on. Great. One of them has yeah. been five to 10 minutes at least of meditation music while I'm doing something active because I can't Perfect. sit still and meditate. Right, right. But I can take a shower, mm. turn the lights down, mm -hmm. listen to my music and yeah. bathe myself. So even yeah. just thinking about like those things, the active showering, we think yeah. of it as like just a regular maintenance thing that like mm -hmm. we have to do. But if you just kind of slow it down a little yes. or use a product that makes you feel Yeah, alive, transports you yes. to, to even back to a, like an amazing memory or something. Yes. Yeah. That can do something. Yeah. The other one is therapy. Yes. And then the other one is working out. Love it. Because I have to. It, mm -hmm. It's just like a part of my life now. When I go yeah. weeks without therapy, when I go weeks without working out, I feel like shit. Mm -hmm. When I don't take my mind somewhere else for five to ten minutes yeah. a day, I feel like shit. Yeah. And so. everyone needs to take time to sit down with themselves mm -hmm. and figure out what those non-negotiables are. Yes. Because they'll look different for everyone, right? Yeah. Therapy doesn't work for some people and that's okay, but maybe you actually need to make time for social events. Mm -hmm. This is one thing mm -hmm. I said to Philip, we got very comfortable, just the two of us yeah. and our baby. I was like, oh. we need to actually, one of our non-negotiables is making sure we go and see friends and do mm -hmm. things and just, reconnect yeah because it's like it's important to laugh with your friends yes. and just go out there and make memories and time is just flying yeah you yeah. know i've been distant from so many people i'm terrible at texting back oh god me too I know. <laughs> <laughs> what especially when you're happy with your man and you talk I to know. them all the time yeah <laughs> it's like sometimes it's you don't care to talk about to other people but you do need to and you then do. when you have those girl dinners like the one that i missed the other fucking night well you know <laughs> I miss everything all the time. That's a, that's just who I but am. But you at are this point. so busy, girl. And your friends have to give you grace. Right. You're in this period of like you've manifested this for so mm -hmm. long. Mm -hmm. You've been talking to me for years yeah. about this is what you wanted. Yeah. It's here. Yeah. It's happening. So like just being fully in that. Yeah. I know. And now I'm just trying to squeeze in five to ten minutes of meditation music and salt air in the shower. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> That's what I'm doing now. Killing it. That's so funny. Oh, my God. <laughs> okay. So we had people write in about Ooh. their own body journeys and what they've been trying to do to kind of just discover and love yes. themselves again. Okay. So are you ready to answer some questions? Oh, I'd love to. Okay. Bring them on. Here we go. All right. Someone said... I used to be very into working out and let's say like average athlete, if that hot, huh? but I got older <laughs> and I soon started having the craziest symptoms, excessive weight gain, migraines mm. and nausea, excessive sweating, falling asleep, mid conversation, brain fog, the mm. list goes on. Ooh. After six years, tons of labs and doctors and gaining 40 pounds in less than six months, I mm. finally had a diagnosis. Hashimoto's. Have you oh, heard of that? I've heard of it, but I don't know. I've heard of that what the kind I'm, of yeah reasons are symptoms well she just said lot. the symptoms i think yeah i think there's there's a lot and i know mm. it's a struggle and i know it's hard to diagnose that's what wow. i've heard i'm now struggling with my new body my new size not being able to do the intense workouts that i used to because i will negative because it will negatively affect my body mm. and not being comfortable even dancing in front of people anymore oh. or playing with my nephews and nieces or allowing oh. anyone else to use their phone for group photos because i don't want attention being drawn to me mm. when it comes to self-love looking in the mirror it's so painful for me knowing that i'll always have this disease doctors don't help and my body is stretching and growing daily how do we even begin this self-love process mm. that's a lot you're mm -hmm. going through a lot definitely give yourself grace yeah 
And don't compare your self-love journey, right? And that's one thing I'm very aware of. We see what self-love looks like, and it looks like a girl in a bikini on a beach, yeah. smiling and being yeah. happy. Obviously, that's not the journey. The work is so much deeper than that. Mm -hmm. But I would definitely start off with when you look in the mirror and she's giving herself that negative defini definition, if you can just start to undo that. Mm. I know it's going to be difficult, but start with like post-it notes or maybe even ask the loved ones around you because the loved ones around you don't see you for your disease right. or your illness. They yeah. don't see that. They see the gift that you are and all that you bring in their lives and the joy. So maybe even ask them, what are some words that you think of when you think of me? Mm. And I'm sure it's gonna be the most beautiful compliments. So start putting those up a little post-it note. So when you look in the mirror in the morning, cause that's yeah. often the first time that we kind of like wage that war on ourselves. Mm. That's the first time I wake up when it's I have so my eating true. disorder and I'm like, you are disgusting you're fat you need mm -hmm. to lose weight you know all of those things were the first things I did to myself yeah that just sets you up for failure so redefining that when you look in the mirror and trying to find the post-it notes if you don't have the words to be kind to yourself ask someone for help to do that yeah and then also body neutrality right yeah I know that you have a disease I know that your body is in pain it's hurting but it's still your body it's still allowing you to be with your family your nieces mm -hmm. nephews it's still allowing you to walk outside and enjoy maybe you love coffee maybe you love blue skies maybe yeah. you love the beach think about those things that your body does allow you to do instead of trying to focus on the things it doesn't right that just reframing again but it's it's not going to be easy every day is going to look different so make sure you appreciate the small wins that you have mm. you know what? I did go out I did go to the store today that was a win yeah you know I did get eight hours of sleep that was a win yes um, so really just cherish the time that you have to make those wins make plans for yourself too right I think when we're busy we sometimes then are just getting on with things and we're less worried in the moment about like who am I what am I doing you know yeah. where does my worth lie so if you don't have a hobby find a hobby that you can physically do who knows, maybe it's painting, maybe it's being part of a book club, just right. little things that give you that sense of self and self-worth are really important when you're going on that journey. Yeah, I think for a lot of people, I've never been super athletic. Like that's just right. was not my vibe. <laughs> I was a competitive cheerleader when I was in high mm. school, but which is, it takes a lot. Yeah, Don't that's a lot. Wrong. It takes a lot, mm. but I was never like running track and like mm. doing this and doing fucking, uh, what's that thing that people but could do? Could you do a backflip? No. Oh, okay. No. <laughs> were you at, were mean, you at the bottom of the did, pile? Yes. Okay. Yes, exactly. I was, I, was Biceps. The, I was the back. So I was mm. like the strength that was holding people up. There you go. But yeah, the flipping child, I tried it. <laughs> it's not for me. But um, I know that for a lot of people who are super athletic and like that has been their life and they, they right. do all these crazy hikes and mountain climbing all that not having that feels mm -hmm. like a, you're missing part of your identity for almost. Sure. And I never had that, but now that I am super into fitness, mm -hmm. it has become a part of my identity, but mm. in a small way. So losing losing that, like I said, it makes me feel like I'm losing myself from week to week when I'm not doing it. So right. I, can, I can only imagine what this person's going through and how it must feel, but right, like you said, the small wins. Like, yeah. yeah, you may not be able to do the sprint, but you could do a really lovely walk for a while. And yep. that could be your exercise for the day. Yeah. Like don't get down on yourself because you can't do what you used to. And I would also say, obviously hopefully the community she is currently around is supportive, mm -hmm. but I would go and find a community online maybe yeah. of people who have what you have or even the disabled community who maybe are able to kind of really understand and mm -hmm. speak to you and say like this is what empowers me yeah even though maybe my body is not able to do certain things that it used to this is how i now i'm learning to love and appreciate right. yeah look it up on tiktok mm. that, i'd be finding all kinds of communities on yeah, there that i don't even true. belong to but i'm just like <laughs> like the moms like the moms <laughs> i'm like oh like i could learn something from this mm -hmm. okay here goes someone Oh, I think this person's giving some advice. Oh. Um, they said, new mom and former model slash beauty queen here. Hey. Oh. I cannot come to grips with the fact that my body has changed and isn't mm. ever going back to being the industry standard. I feel like all the emphasis in the beauty space is on the physical. And now I feel like I'm an imposter. Oh. The worst part is that I don't even know if I actually hate my body or not. If this is just so deeply ingrained in my mind that I'm mm. shaming myself out of habitually having to do it for so long for work. My identity is too wrapped up in my body and I don't know how to change that. Oh. I said, 
I read it wrong. They were looking for advice for this. Mm. But I get that too, because for me, I, I mean, for just being in that industry, like coming from pageants, uh. same thing. I realized very quickly, you know, when you compete at, on a stage like Miss Teen USA, yeah. the ages range from 14 to 19. So you have a 14 year old, imagine your 14 year old self competing on a stage next to your 19, 20 year old self. Yeah. <gasps> what? Like that's, that's not, it's, it's insane to mm -hmm, think about. So you mm -hmm. have 14 year olds who are getting boob jobs and nose jobs. When, oh. If I look at pictures, even from when I was 17, my nose looks completely different. People have asked me if I've had a nose job because my old pictures, wow. your face changes, your yeah. body changes, so much changes. but. You're at a stage in life where everything's so permanent and everything is like the end of the world. Absolutely. So I get that because when I was standing on stage and I'm 17 next to a 14 year old or even a 17 year old who mm. is a, a size zero naturally. Yeah. Even though I had worked my way down to a size zero naturally, my body is just not built that way absolutely I'm, there's only one of you exactly you know my body is built a little different so i'm always going to look naturally bigger and then i competed and i was hearing like oh she's obese she's fat Jeez. she's a plus size in Team usa whatever whatever they could say to label it yeah. it was like this is not what the industry is used to mm. and for you with modeling it's like the same thing like yeah. when you first signed with that first agency they're like this is not what we're used to so we right. don't know what to do so we can't help you afraid of the unknown yeah in one way exactly and that's what if you're going she's pr trying to process these changes mm -hmm. right and obviously now unfortunately ingrained in her is this toxic messaging yeah is this standard and to break free from that like you you are the only one that can do that mm. but i will say if the industry is not healthy for you remove yourself mm. you know yeah there's a few models who i've definitely given advice to who have just gotten really consumed with it and it's really taken a toll on them i was like maybe this just isn't for you yeah. right now either right different seasons of your life you're in a different place but i will say like i admitted being a new mom i've never felt so lost mm. and in that sense i was removed from the industry i was in austin i was at home as the pandemic but I can imagine how an Eaton sort of could have easily reared its head mm -hmm. because I was feeling lost. I could have easily been, you know, I don't know, peer pressured into something by the industry, if that makes sense. Yeah. But I would say figure out how, again, you can find people in your community, your mom tribe, your family, your friends, your partner who can motivate you to focus on the things that you can control. Mm. And so again, finding those positive things that are in your life that you like to do that fulfill you that give you purpose that aren't related to modeling or the industry are really really important and yeah. I think me building that brand helped me have that and guide me because mm. it gave me something else to focus on that wasn't dependent on someone else's opinion of what I looked like yeah when everything is dependent on that it's really tough because of course you're going to take it out on yourself yes. of course you're going to look in the mirror of course you're going to think oh i didn't get booked again it's probably because of my size or my body looks different now i've had a baby yeah you have to protect yourself and put yourself first we have to remember it too like this industry is not normal no it's not a normal thing mm -hmm. like it's not normal to see yourself in something and i'm guilty of it too i'm on tv every fucking week yeah three times now yes. a week yeah god bless thank god but like <laughs> I look at things and I'm like, mm, I wish that would look different or oh, I should have wow. pulled down my pants there. Or, oh, mm. I should have like tucked that hair over there. Like you're constantly, where does it, end? Where does it fucking end? Mm. It has to end somewhere. And if yeah. it can end anywhere, it's got to end with you because yeah. like you, you're the only one really who's even noticing these things most of the time. Absolutely. We're our biggest critics, mm -hmm. but we could also be our biggest fans too. If we really, really try. Yes. So. Get in front of that mirror. Get give yourself a little hype. Yeah. You're doing amazing. Like yeah. I said, I, I'm a mom. If, if any moms are listening, the fact that you just woke up today and you were ready to go again, yeah. <laughs> that's a win. Child, and I <laughs> commend you. Okay, because that's a lot. <laughs> oh. So this is, this. someone just wanted to acknowledge, they said, this is a very important topic. If I was talking to someone who was struggling with this, I would prompt them to shift their mindset from embracing their body to honoring it, mm. giving it what it's asking for, water, movement, meditation, mm -hmm. and showing gratitude, actually thanking it for supporting them and communicating with them every Beautiful. pain, illness outside of natural decay of the human body is a message and a request harmony between body and mind and soul will naturally cause them to embrace their body harmony is a different relationship a deep one 
all love. That's beautiful. That is a beautiful way to end this. I love that Mm -hmm. because it's true. Like even the pandemic, like everybody's body was (sighs) doing crazy shit during the pandemic. Listen. Okay. Mm -hmm. But that wasn't, that was survival. Like we we were were. in survival mode. Absolutely. Nobody gave us a a brochure on how to handle, I I didn't get the handbook. Did you? No, I didn't get a handbook. And nothing's (laughs) nothing's scarier than just not knowing. Yes, yes. We've been going through life. We went to school. We knew that we were going to be in school for this many years. Mm -hmm. We were going to take these classes, that prom at the end. We knew all of these set things. And then suddenly the whole world had no idea what's going on. Mm-hmm. No idea what tomorrow looked like. Yeah. So we're still recovering. Yes. We have to give ourselves grace. We're yeah. still trying to figure it out. And even still, like I feel like adulthood is a, a long <laughs> pandemic as well. Yeah. You don't know what is coming from day to day. Yeah. And like, that's why people will be like, oh, you need to post a what I eat in a day. My mm-hmm. What I eat in a day is dependent on how I'm feeling in that Absolutely. day. Absolutely. If I want to order a fucking spinach dip from Cheesecake Factory mm. at 10 a.m. Mm. on a Tuesday. I had pizza for breakfast yesterday. But I, I don't survival. want anyone to com- compare <laughs> yes, when yes. it comes to food, too. You don't yeah. need to know what Cam is eating. No. You don't need to know what I'm eating. No. You need to listen to your body, like that beautiful comment, honor it. Mm-hmm. And just listen. Intuitive yeah. eating is is the most important thing. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Just move in that energy. Mm-hmm. Like what is for you, it, it works for you. Yeah. Do what works for you, what is healthy for you, mm-hmm. what is best for you, and you won't lose. You will not lose. Iskra. Mm-hmm. I love you, girl. I love you too. Tell everyone where they can find you <laughs> and the podcast. Okay. You can obviously find us on the Couplish Podcast. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And you can come follow me on Instagram. Yes. I S K R A or on TikTok. You know what? I may as well tell you. I'm concepting a 115 part series on modeling right now. I've brainstormed every single episode with my tiles and I'm ready to record in the next couple of weeks. Where the fuck do you find the time and the I energy? I didn't sleep. I just got so like, I've been wanting to do this for so long and I was like, tonight's the night. I'm going to concept every episode. Oh my God, I love that. It's going to be the deepest dive into modeling you'll ever find. Padding is going to be in there. Padding will be in there. Mm. Contracts, how to read your contract, mm. that will all be in there. I'm just done seeing models being walked all over. Yeah. So yeah. get ready for that on TikTok. Oh my God, I at love Iskra. That. I love that. And Saltaire, <laughs> go to Target. Go smell good. Go smell good. 2023 is the year of smelling your best. Get this pink beach, y'all. <laughs> this is lovely. I can get you a code. I wish we had like <laughs> smell a smell a listen on here so you right? can smell it. It's so good. No, yeah. Listen, if you got a code, mm. you put that in the description. Okay. <laughs> Love it. Thank you so much. Yes. This was so good. I appreciate Thank it. Thank you for having me on. Bye. Bye. <laughs> I'm Cami Crawford, host of the Relationship Podcast. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video and want to see more videos, click below to subscribe and like this video for more Dear Media content. So shut up and listen.